The Kimball Health Services Employee of the Month for August is Ed Germis, paramedic in the Kimball Health Services Emergency Medical Services Department. He was nominated for his award by Jess Webb, Chief Operations Officer. Ed came in and helped when the ER was short-staffed, Webb wrote. He also was at the ready for whatever when Mike Downey EMS director was gone. Ed is a real team player. Thank you. Congratulations, Ed. Well, after 11 years of business, the Kimball County Visitor Center, at 204 Kimball Boulevard, is sad to say the high point of your Nebraska adventure is shutting down next month. They are closing on Tuesday, October 15th. Until then, they are there Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. They are encouraging people to come in to see them and their gift shop and support their local vendors. They said we'll miss you all. And here are the details of everything that they announced on Friday morning as they announce everything including an open house on Saturday, October 5th prior to their shutdown date of Tuesday, October 15th as well. Well, October 5th, we are going to be having a open house to say goodbye to everyone. Okay, we're going to be having a fruit, meat and che cheese tray. And um, we'll have the open during our hours of 10 to 4. And we're asking our vendors to discount the items so that we can sell them instead of them having to haul them home. Okay? Oh, yeah. Awesome. That sounds, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And the visitor center shuts down, I think, October 15th. Mm -hmm. October 15th will be the last day. Our open house is October 5th. Okay. Oh, that's cool. So there's going to be 10 days starting. There's going to be 10 days left when that time comes. 10 days of what, honey? Uh, 10 more days of business left on the time. Yeah. True, true. Oh, yeah. And we'll try to sell as much as we can so that the vendors get the last of what we can offer here. Sounds good, yeah. According to Flores, the consensus throughout the state in many counties is that we should hang on to as much money as we can for now because of the impact we will probably see in the years to come. He continued, one of the things we regrettably had to do was make a decision on the visitor center, and that was to close the visitor center October 15th. Meetings of the visitor center committee will continue on a monthly basis. The lodging tax also will continue in the county. We have been working on economic development for a while, and it looks like it is getting off the ground, Flores said. It will entail economic development and tourism. Talking to the county attorney, it will fall within the rules and regulations to use tourism for the lodging tax. Mary Lynch Elementary held its first deposit day of its student savings program on Thursday, September 5, which brought in $563.35 by the students. The school partnered with First Tier Bank to bring an in-school bank to the elementary school called the Longhorn Branch. Each Thursday, bank employees visit the school to set up the bank and the library with the help of five sixth grade students as the bank tellers. These five students applied for the job at the end of their fifth grade year, and after the interview process they got the job to help with the bank this year. 58 students have signed up so far to participate in the program, and 49 of those participated on opening day. Students who wish to put money in their savings account can bring money every week in a deposit slip that is provided by the school. The bank tellers record every student's deposit in a registry to keep track of what each student has saved. The students are presented with their savings at their sixth grade graduation. Mary Lynch Elementary Principal Amanda Kulek says this program is truly trying to raise financially responsible kiddos and just giving that one more opportunity to give exposure to that. First Year Bank also matched students' first deposit up to $5, so they match the first $5 for every deposit that was made. With the bank match, the total money saved is $803.35 after the first deposit day. The students will also earn little prizes as they hit certain milestones with their deposits. For example, when a student makes their first deposit, they get a candy bar, and after three deposits they get a special eraser or highlighter, and so on. First Tier Bank will be sending out a weekly newsletter giving the results of what was saved that week by students, along with offering a financial tidbit. The Kimball Longhorn football team earned a decisive win over Bayard on Saturday, beating the visiting Tigers 54-26. A stingy defense and a very productive offense led the Horns to their first win of the season. Led by senior No Trevino with five touchdowns on the day, 
including one interception returned for a TD, the Longhorns scored a total of eight touchdowns and three two-PT extra point conversions. Also scoring for the Longhorns were junior quarterback, Trevor Fuss sophomore fullback, Greg Bingham and freshman running back, Braden Fuss. Defensive standouts for Kimball included senior, Derek Russell, Trevor Fuss, and sophomore Cameron Maginus. Highlights for Bayard included a kickoff return for a touchdown by junior Anderson Gowarder, and a 40-yard fumble scoop and score from 230-pound sophomore lineman Connor Posey. The Longhorns are back in action this Friday, at home against the visiting St. Pat's Irish from North Platte. On Wednesday, September 4, 2024, the Kimball County Sheriff's Office arrested Philip Nicely, 30, for assault by strangulation. All subjects are presumed innocent until proven guilty. As the city of Kimball expects growth, multiple housing developments have been in the works, including a project by a longtime Kimball family, the Metis. The city council approved the Metis development in a meeting over the summer, which will consist of four modular duplexes, one of which is already built. Anna and Wesley Metis bought the first building when it was up for sale and outlined their project around that. It is a single-story ranch-style duplex a little over 2,000 square feet and has three bedrooms and two and a half baths. Anna and Wesley's son Mark is overseeing the project, and he said there is not yet a timeline on when the first building will be installed on the property. He is hoping to get the foundation poured soon, and then it would take about a month for it to cure, then they can get the structure installed. The building has a little bit more interior and exterior work to do post-setting, but for the most part, it is completed. We're a little family building them as we go so that's been the challenge for us, we're not building the entire thing at once, Mark Mita said. We'll get the plat done then doing one at a time once we get one going and some income we'll work on the next one. The other three duplexes will be two-story townhomes, around 2,000 square feet, and will possibly have a garage built along the front so each townhouse can have a bedroom built over the top of the garage. The single-story unit will run north to south while the two-story units will run east to west. The lot is on Nadine Street between 2nd and 3rd Street. The Midas have always wanted to build something on the plot of land since they have owned it for the past few decades, so when the opportunity presented itself, they went for it. It's a nice area of Kimball, so it's a great opportunity for the location, and they've owned the hotel for about 28 years, so they will eventually want to retire and have a source of income, Mark Mita said. They have a lot of customers at the hotel who request extended stays, so it would be a good business opportunity on that end as well. Water crews were working on a leak on Jefferson between 3rd and 4th Street on Sunday. They had the section of Jefferson shut down and diverting traffic on eastbound Highway 30 to keep the crew safe as they work on repairs. They were working as quickly and efficiently as possible while maintaining the safety of the crew to restore water and water pressure to the area neighbors affected. That is all in local news. At Kimball State Bank and Kimball Insurance, products we offer are home, auto, business, truck, farm, life, boat, RV, motorcycle, ATV, rental homes, vacant homes, and SR-22 auto policies. Hours of operation are Monday through Thursday from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Fridays 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturdays by appointment and closed on Sundays. We are conveniently located at 205 South Locust Street, four blocks west of the stoplights off Highway 30. For more than a century, Kimball State Bank and Insurance has been serving our community and will continue for more years to come. Call us at 308-235-4629 for more information or stop by 205 South Locust Street. Are you struggling with the cost of groceries? We are here to help. It's the Kimball Food Pantry. We are open on the first Tuesday morning of the month from 9.15 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and the second, third, and fourth Thursday evening of the month from 5.15 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. We have updated shopping guidelines and many food and toiletry choices. We are located at 509 West 5th Street, the Old Catholic School. Come in the East Door. The Kimball Food Pantry does not discriminate in accordance with the federal civil rights law and USDA civil rights regulations and policies. Let KCTS get you on the road to great health care. Get front door ride service to the newly opened Kimball Health Services Hospital and to the Sydney and Scottsbluff Regional Medical Centers. Our bus routes provide reliable and convenient service multiple times daily. Let KCTS take care of your medical rides so your medical provider can take great care of you. 
Learn more at RideKCTS.com. KCTS, we're headed your direction. Are you looking for that special, one-of-a-kind gift or item for yourself? A W Laser Art is a very proud farm and ranch wife nestled on the plains of western Nebraska. They offer a full line of custom, laser gifts and awards as well as western home decor. If you don't see something that you really like and want to design your own, that is fantastic. Custom orders are always welcome. They also love to help out groups by offering several fundraising options. So please, take a look around. Feel free to contact Laser Art by phone or email. They look forward to designing that perfect gift for you. A W Laser Art and so much more. Visit www.awlaserart.com or call 308-235-8406. Bullseye Maintenance and Repair is servicing Kimball and surrounding areas. No job too small. Call Tony Hernandez at 970-624-9863 for a free estimate. He does plumbing, basic water heaters, replacement, toilets and sinks. Yard maintenance, weekly mowing, raking, weeding, fall cleanup. Landscape, rock, flower beds, fall cleanup, snow removal, remodels, interior and exterior. You name it, we do it. Are you looking for custom welding and fabrication? Are you looking for hydraulic, PTO, and driveline repairs? What about farm equipment repairs? What about steel sales? Then look no further. Prestige Manufacturing Incorporated has portable welding service available. They are located at 105 South Webster Street. Prestige Manufacturing Incorporated is open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturday from 7 a.m. to noon. You can call them at 308-235-3700 during business hours. Prestige Manufacturing Incorporated has been providing farm machinery and equipment manufacturing in Kimball since 2009. For all of your manufacturing needs, give Prestige Manufacturing Incorporated a call at 308-235-3700 or stop by 105 South Webster Street during business hours. Come join our team at Kimball Health Services. We're adding multiple positions and we offer competitive wages, excellent benefits, and a world-class work environment. If you're passionate about health care, we want you. Learn more at KimballHealth.org. Clean Harbors is currently looking for multiple candidates for open positions at their Kimball facility. Apply today to work for an award-winning team and stay for a rewarding career. Qualified candidates must have high school diploma, the ability to work in a team environment, possess good communication and organizational skills, as well as an excellent commitment to health and safety. Benefits include competitive pay, health coverage after 30 days, 401k match, as well as growth opportunities, generous paid time off, and tuition reimbursement. For more information and a complete list of open positions, visit Careers cleanharbors.com clean harbor sustainability in action a broncos potluck at beer and loathing is taking place on four sundays in a row bring a dish to participate and have food there by halftime you can enter to win bar favorite dish september 8th versus seattle seahawks with your favorite dish september 15th versus steelers with meat and potatoes september 22nd versus tampa bay with seafood and september 29th versus jets with pizza Again, this is at the Beer and Loathing Bar and Grill located at 206 South Chestnut Street in downtown Kimball. Visit backcountry69145.com. This is sponsored by Ashley's Custom Embroidery. For more information, call Ashley's Custom Embroidery and more at 308-235-5144 or the Beer and Loathing Bar at 308-230-2223. The Kimball Farmers Day 3rd Annual Food Fair and Vendor Event will be held on Friday, September 27th and Saturday, September 28th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at 2nd Street and Chestnut Street. For more information or to reserve your spot, call or text 308-672-9724. From the KIMB Weather Center, this is your weather outlook for the next week. Tonight, isolated showers and thunderstorms before 9 p.m., then a slight chance of showers between 9 p.m. and midnight. Mostly cloudy, then gradually becoming mostly clear, with a low around 55. West-southwest wind around 10 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Tuesday sunny and hot, with a high near 91. West wind 5 to 10 miles per hour becoming east in the afternoon. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 55. 
east-southeast wind around 5 miles per hour becoming southwest after midnight. Wednesday, a slight chance of showers between noon and 3 p.m., then a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms after 3 p.m. Mostly sunny, with a high near 89. West-southwest wind 10 to 15 miles per hour becoming south in the morning. Winds could gust as high as 30 miles per hour. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Wednesday night a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms before 9 p.m., then a slight chance of showers between 9 p.m. and midnight. Partly cloudy, with a low around 55. Chance of precipitation is 20%. Thursday sunny and hot, with a high near 90. Breezy. Thursday night, mostly clear with a low around 55. Breezy. Friday sunny, with a high near 85. Friday night, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms before midnight. Mostly clear with a low around 51. Saturday sunny, with a high near 84. Saturday night, mostly clear with a low around 53. Next Sunday sunny, with a high near 86. Next Sunday night, mostly clear with a low around 53. And next Monday sunny, with a high near 86. That is your weather outlook for the next week. Increasing west to west northwest winds are expected today that could interact with very dry air to create critical fire weather conditions for some areas in southeast Wyoming and the Nebraska Panhandle. Red flag warnings are in effect for Monday for a large part of southeast Wyoming. Outdoor burning is not recommended.